Uh, good afternoon and welcome to day two of Royal Ascot in this first S07 season. And what an exciting day we had yesterday with 12 absolutely spectacular races and some thrilling finishes. However, first thing to point out is that unfortunately the audio was lost for the first race, the Queen Anne Stakes. So we'll rectify that straight away now then with a rerun of yesterday's first race, the Queen Anne Stakes. Top one is Barney Fife for Obi-Wan, Cabochon posted, Steve Rand, Dark Side, Paul O'Neill, Lamigo for Darren Thompson, Only Time, Hems, Order War, Leon Van Rensburg, Ridgeway Acclaim for John Morgan, Right Beside You for Hems, Unlimited David for Dan Hughes, Zulu Dawn, Joshua Sutherland, Farhana Landes for James Shea, Galore, Ryan Costello, Kithanga, Dan Sears for Schlagito, Rampage Down for Leon Van Rensburg, Top Seeded Obi-Wan and Umbrian Fontenay for... David Robertson, a big field for this then, straight mile, and they're all in, and away they go in for the first of this season's Royal Ascot, and it's right beside you, it's just about the first to show, they sort themselves out then through the first furlong, Zulu Dawes also prominent, so too is the Grey Lamigo, the Grey Lamigo up the far side of the track, also top series wide on the track, but this one closest to us is Zulu Dawn, and Zulu Dawn's probably just about ahead in the lead, from right beside you, the Black Horse up the centre of the track, furthest wide still is the Grey, that's Lamigo, top seeded is next, now they're the leading four, as we switch angles, and Zulu Dawn, He's now furthest away from us on the round, just in the lead from the Grey Lamego in second. Right beside you is third. Top seeded is fourth. The favourite Rampage Town is well placed on the rail. On just on that one's inside. Cabochon posted is up the centre of the track. And also looking for a bit of racing room there is Umber and Fontenay. But at the moment it's still Zulu Dawn and Lamigo. Lamigo, the grey might just be in front now from Zulu Dawn. The angle's deceptive. Third is right beside you. Then comes Cabochon posted. Top seeded is in the yellow jacket closest to us. The one that looks to be making eye catching progress is Cabuchon posted. Also coming through on the rail there is Umbrian Fontenay. Rampage Town now starting to get going. But it's Zulu Dawn in the lead now as Lamigo drops away. It's Zulu Dawn from Order War. And Rampage Town they're racing down towards the final two furlongs. And Zulu Dawn leads by a length. But Order War up the centre of the track. Rampage Town over on the far side. Lamigo's trying to get back into it again. Only time is still there. So is right beside you. But now it's Order, Dawn, Order War who takes it up from Stable Companion. Rampage Town. And they're being swamped all of a sudden now by Only Time right beside you. Far one of Landes. Cabochon posted. They're racing inside the channel of the post. And Cabochon posted and shot through to take it. The first surprise in the first race. And I think everybody was on. Rampage Town in the preview show earlier, but that one is a win for Capuchon Posted. And unless that's a newcomer with different colours, that's going to be Steve Rahn, as Stuart likes to call him. And Stu may actually have tipped that thinking about it. So a great start to the week there for Steve Rahn then. And he was one of eight trainers who managed to get a win yesterday, but two spectacular performances, Paul Rhodes and Darren Thompson both getting three wins and Steve Rand, Martin Leadham, Nick Driver and Mark Jones, Django and Joshua Sutherland all getting one winner each so nice to see some of the wins being spread about one or two of the lesser trainers and also one or two of the newer trainers getting some wins quite a few entries in the getting the Queen's Hat competition which was set up yesterday then so we're eagerly waiting the first glimpse of the queen today we had quite a few suggestions in there one or two people thinking they're being clever suggesting purples there my colors but I've absolutely no say in what color hat the queen wears let's have a look and see if we can spot her our spy saying she's just around a corner and it's apricot so it's an apricot hat so anybody who got apricot you are the winner Right then, on to day two's form guide with Nick, Stu, Doug and myself. Apologies for the sound quality. It's again, not the best, but hopefully it's a little bit better than yesterday. And we'll go through today's races and have a listen out for some interesting stories, especially about George Formby. And first of all, Sherlock Stu getting some information from Nick Driver. We're at the races or anybody? Oh, I've watched the racing post. Oh dear, oh wow. Yeah, so I've been there for about three years. I'm in the commercial team, but I do a bit of tipping and whatnot on the side for Maydan. Oh, okay, brilliant. Oh, wow. Somebody, yeah, that's really good. Really in the game. Oh, you know well, I'm not working at the moment, so 
until British Racing is back up on the sidelines, which means plenty of starters orders, so it's not that bad. Well, so not so bad, plenty of time for that. Uh, well, we'll be uh, obviously knocking you up for a few tips then when uh, May then comes round, is that November? Yeah, definitely, yeah, 100%. Yeah, the December time, but when the carnival kicks off, the rest is just, you know, the carnival stuff is where it's at, where I turn to do I, I have a column in the, in the online and I do the big, bigger races in the weekend, so that's quite good fun. Professional. Okay, I sometimes do the weekend, the weekend to pull out for Royal Ascot as well, but I'm not sure what's going on with that this year. I did the last two years. Okay, I'm fairly successful, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't let you do the next year. <laughs> You'd like to hope so. <laughs> what do we think about day two? Where do we start day two? I think the first race on day two, you're doing that, Nick. The Ripplesdale. Oh, 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 no idea. <laughs> but I think uh, Django's probably got one. Uh, that keep your distance is... I don't know if it's been saved for this or not, but it hasn't been seen since the uh, Jockey Club and won that pretty well, and that looked like quite a handy race. Um, obviously, both of Paul Rose have a chance. It's, it's a pretty well race, so they'll go close, but I'm going with keep your distance. Yeah, no, looking at it again, it's a fairly open field quick draw for Mark Jones. Had a couple of wins, what, 0 to 80 and 0 to 70, 0 to 80. Even winning after a stumbled start. So you kind of think it's obviously got a better class, but prefer softer ground. But it's, a, it's good today, so things may be better. Now, I'll stick my neck out with Mark Jones's quick draw. Could sneak in there and a nice way. You have a big ask, but you never know. Right, well, I'm going to go for Hyperion, I think. Hyperion probably will win it. This always used to be sort of like that Oaks consolation prize, didn't it? Although it looks like we've got, um, we've made it a 0 to 120 handicap and let any old body in it, so it's not for three year old fillies anymore. But I still think that Hyperion, that one pound that it gets from the top two, will be enough yeah. for it to win. Well, that will lead us back to the old World Cup. And I'm quite shocked to see, I don't think John, oh no, John has got a horse in there, I was a bit concerned, but what did you think of <laughs> Looks like this is going to be a really, really good race, doesn't it? It's, it's a proper race, that. And what do you like to look off? I'm going to go quite simply in the hunt, um, I think it's the only horse in the race to be proven over the two mile four trip in group pass. The rest, there's a few in there that haven't even run over the two mile four yet. Obviously the John Morgan horse, Colseum Bazaar will go close. Melancholy Cove will go close for Leon as well, but in the hunt for all roads for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a fairly old. It's a big field for the Gold Cup. We don't usually have. I wouldn't have said we usually have this many runners in the last couple of seasons. Um, you're right. I, suspect, I guess with Paul's horse sort of confirmed form. I mean, Melancholy Cove, you know, Ben Rensbear. It's it's hard. I mean, I w I will just go with John because uh, you know he loves this race, and I can imagine you know he's been running cozy and bizarre, obviously slightly. Right, in fact, further to over two mile five at one. Yeah, no, I'm going for Mr. Morgan's horse. Get in there, John, with Cozy and Bazaar. Mm -hmm. Couldn't argue with all of them, really, but I'm going to go for Melancholy Cove. Right, anyway, Doug's finally got got here. Only a day late. Where you been, mate? Oh, I'm a day ahead of you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so, did you get your room? Um, did you get your dinner and everything sorted out? Yeah, yeah, just coughed up down then. So, we're only asking Gold Cup. You got the card with you? Okay. Actually, whatever Gray's got in it, I'll go for that. Ciao, Buck. So I think he's got Petrosian winning, I think. He's got. And he's also got Exceedance yep. Therapy. So he's got two. So he's got two chances there. Which one's got. Whatever's got the best form, one oh. of, I'll go for that one. All right. Well, one of them's not run before, so you have to have Petrosian winning then. So that's that. So a quick recap there then. So it's in the hunt for Nick and Colseum Bazaar for Stu, Melancholy Co for me and Petrosian winning for Doug. Is that right? Yep, that's correct. Okay. Right, race 15. It's a good time for you to turn up, actually, Doug, because you're commentating on this race. Am I? You are. <laughs> but, <laughs> if you haven't got a list of the runners, you don't know what's in it, do you? <laughs> No. <laughs> so how are you going to pick any? I'll just go by trainers. I'll just pick trainers. <laughs> Tell me what the what the rating of the race is, and I'll give you a trainer. It's a naught to seventy over a mile for three year olds. Rightio. Oh, this will be Ryan Costello's first win. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wish to be rude, but I don't think it'll win if it's died now. No, no, it'll, it'll win. <laughs> I've been looking after it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Mm, okay, well, it's, it's called Passato. Um, or Passato. Yeah, oh, I've given it a speedball. 
Okay. <laughs> the old win dope. the Boston Marathon. Get the old doping men to have a look at it. But I suppose if he's got it, he's got to win somewhere. But um, I don't think he's going to win that one, to be honest. Um, I think looking at the thing, I think there's probably only one winner in the entire field, isn't there? And it's one on field ground as well. So I'm going to go for Gray, Gray in this one. Southern Comfort. By the way, you need to know this. We've discovered, um, while you've not been here, that Nick is an imposter. He's actually a, profi oh, right. a professional tipping racing person who knows what he's talking about. And basically he's make, making me and Stu look like a couple of herbits. <laughs> 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 Talking of you, I think you've got a good chance here. This Uriah Heap, uh, you know what? I think you've got it sewn up. It's got a good chance of 60. It was third in a 0 to 80 by half a length off 72. Um, and wasn't far away last week either, so it's got a good chance. The only other horse I think can win it is that Mark Ross Raver for James Shea. That's quite low in the weights. Right, well, I'll be perfectly happy if it does if it if it does win. It's um, it would be good if it did. Well, but I don't think Barney Curly style lead them horse. Um, <laughs> you know, they tend to all be, they go up and down in the weights like a yo yo. <laughs> they pop up. <laughs> so, yeah, it could be right, but I won't go for it. I can't stand that kind of music. It's, so, you see, this I'm is where you've done it again, you see. You just go in there without even thinking about it. It's got absolutely nothing to do with that. If you looked at it properly, you would see it, that that horse, its sire is called David Copperfield, who is not a magician, but is a Charles Dickens book, and Uriah Heep is a character in David Copperfield. You just think it's all about rock music. It's not. It's about the classics and things, you know? No. But I have to call your horse, baby, a, because you need some magic to win with that horse. <laughs> so obviously I try and give it a bit of a feel. But you try and hit by H double E P, not heap as in all that sort of But anyway, it's anything could win that, let's be honest. Um Philippe Gerard, his horse probably shouldn't be seventy rated. Toronto Valois. So which one have you gone for? After all that? Oh, Toronto Valois. Oh right, okay. Boy. Okay. Right, the two centenary stakes next. What's the rating? Uh, it's a 0 to 120. 0 to 120? Mm. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go for Josh's horse. Might have a problem because he ain't got one. Yeah, he oh, he has. <laughs> He's got one right down the bottom, yeah. Vanquish. Yeah. Yeah. How do you get one down there? The, is this, this is a set weight? No, it's 0 to 120. Oh, really? Mm. It's a, field of perfectly weighted. Yeah, it could be, couldn't it? Because what's it, what's it on? 90, I think, is it? No, 95. And the top one's on... That's right. 120, so, yeah, it'll, it's probably probably good. Anyway, I suppose Stu's going to say he's not going for Joan yet because he doesn't like that type of music either. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to go for Lily Pool either. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going for, then? Oh, okay. Consistent last four weeks. Um, it's a step up, but I think he'll go close to ground. And suits and he's got good one. Thornton Quid's a good horse. Um, Joan Jett is probably another danger as well. Yep, Joan Jett for me. Do you want to hear something funny? Yep. I was listening to one of Nick's races the other day, and he's calling. I don't know who's in the race. But at the furlong, he got really high pitched like Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, he sounds like a trainer. <laughs> His horse has just hit the lead. <laughs> It's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty bad when you have to commentate on your own. Do you remember when Tim had his first ever winner and he just completely lost it, oh, didn't he? That was a classic. <laughs> classic <laughs> he just call. completely ignored everything else in the race for the last furlong and started talking about his own horse. It was just so funny that was. Boys, get the whiskey out. That was one of the best calls I've heard. I remember that one actually. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was pretty good. That, of course, that Stu and Doug didn't get to do it very often because they never had many winners. <laughs> I don't know where you get these ideas from. What do you mean? What was the horse that dropped 30 pounds last week? Oh, that, I can't, which one? <laughs> you dropped 
Well, I just nothing to do with me. I didn't do it. I can only put them in the races I can put them in. It's uh, up to the. You get some very tasty handicap marks. I must admit, I did get one or two quite good ones, yeah, but um, I don't know why. But it's because he nobbled that good horse out a few years ago and he's making it up for it. Now, what, do you think everyone, everyone's paying you back just for that one horse that gave a bad Yeah, well, he did it to a couple of mine a few years ago. I mean, I had that one, two that won group one races and I just never had a chance again after that. Let's go on to the next race. Did you pick one in that? Yeah, yeah, mate. Mark. yeah Josh's. There's another one coming up your street, mate, with a 7 here, Doug. Oh, lovely. Yeah, King George. Yeah. King George Handicap, 0 to 70. How many horses in it? Eleven. Is Ananias got a horse in it? No. He had, he had his first winner last uh, week, didn't he? Yes, he did. That's very well done, because he hasn't... Uh, his English isn't very good, so... He's finding it hard to work stuff out, so... Mm. He's coming off a short run-up, so... That's... Eleven runners dug 0 to 70, and surprisingly enough, joint top weights are Nick's and mine. We both don't look like they've got much form at all. No, neither would I. Neither would I. Yeah, but come on, there's a bunch of bags in this one, let's be honest. It's probably the worst race so far, isn't it? Alright, let's see. I'm just trying to think who's down the bottom with the trainers. Can you roll out a few nut trainer names, please? Uh, James Shane's got one in it. Dan Hughes is in it. Sirius is in it. Craig Beckwith's in it. Derek Hinton's got a couple. Ryan Costello and Daniel French. And then Nick and me. Uh, Daniel French must be due. Probably is with that one. He's rated 45. He's rated as low as you can get. So. Alright, hang on. Yeah, yeah, leave it. I'll go with that. What about you, Stu? Difficult, isn't it? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, there's not a lot here to rave about. I mean, there's only. I mean, yeah, it's probably going to come from one of these. Um, what about that second lovely drop, Nick? Has that not got a chance at all? Uh, uh, it's, it's all right. It's it's nowhere near as good as modern verdicts and trials. I'll put it that way. But I mean, it's getting ten pound from it, so who knows? Well, no, I'll go for your lovely drop then. I'll go for one of It's a stew. Okay, well, I'm going to go for Record Guzman because I've already selected that in the Lucky 63 competition. I think uh, James Shea's come back this season after a couple of seasons away, and he's doing all right. Yeah, Record Guzman's got a good chance. Um, Snowstorm for me uh, for Craig. Uh, it's been consistent against better horses and will enjoy the good ground. Uh, record Guzman and Radio. I think Radio Therapy's got a reasonable chance after that fourth, so we'll see. Yeah, I must admit, oh. I don't fancy at all. I needed to have about 10 transfers out. I had a list of about 10 that I wanted to get rid of, and Radio Therapy was <laughs> one of them. Um, but I, I had five that were worse than him. So. Okay, Albany Stakes is next in. Six furlong, two year old fillies. What's the rating? Uh, it's, it's just an op open group three. Top rated horses on the night. No. Yeah? Yes, he has oh, yeah. I'm sure I can't see today. Crikey, that's the second time you've done that. Is that what you're going for, Doug? Yeah. Okay, get that one down. What do you think, Martin? What do I think? I think Leon will win this with where eagles dare i know it's a bit boring to be the top weight but but this will actually this will give me a bit of an idea about whether i've improved or not because the one i've got in this is probably my second best of my newcomers so we'll be hoping it does okay easy choice then. it is all right so cool. oh, um yeah driving henrietta for me actually um dead heated with one of leon's and a very strong maiden uh, I think over seven, followed up with a fifth in the Golden Slipper. Uh, I think that form's the strongest in the field, even though it's only the fourth highest rated. Where equals there is obvious shout for the places. Okay. Well, I'm going to stick my neck out with a newbie. I think uh, James Shea, Lady King Lock. Um, well, uh, see, you know, we're not only talking about top rating 108 here, so any new horse could easily come in and uh, take this. So I'm going for Lady King Lock, James Shea. Okay. Right up, so we can jump on then now to race 21 because we've got a couple of races at Carlisle or somewhere in between. I think Tim's going to do them. So let's have a look at race 21. King Edward VII, the Ascot Derby as it was. This looks actually like one or two decent horses, isn't it? What's the rating? It's a, it's a group two, Doug. It's open. Open radio. Uh, oh, Leon's horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, Leon, Leon's got a, got a, got a new one. I, I 
thought we'd moved on to. I thought we'd moved on to a new race. We have. It's the King Edward the uh, Seventh. Oh, we are. Well, King Edward the Seventh. Next race is it? What no, the next that? two races are Carlisle. We're not bothering with them. Oh, no. Alright, sorry. We'll be here all day if we do them. Anyway, we know what you're gonna go for. We know what you're gonna go for in this anyway, Stu, because we you're doing it on your music collection, so you're gonna go for George Formby. Who's that me? No Stu, because you don't like rock music. He's gonna go for George Formby because his record collection. If there was one in there called the Nolan Sisters, he'd have gone for that, but he's got George Formby instead. Actually, he was in what's the film? Come on, George, it's called. Yeah. <laughs> The ride man eater. The horse is called man eater, and obviously nobody can ride him other than George Formby. I just thought I'd tell you that, old George. Yep. Well, here's, well, here's, I've got some uh, useless information. I've actually read the George Formby biography. Oh, and, yes. uh, <laughs> he used to he used to be a jockey. Did he? Really? And yep, he used to be a jockey. And they reckon they theorise. Sounds like rubbish to me. I would have said something else, but I was to swear and you'd cut it out. Um, um, so they theorise that his, the hand that he used to do the chords on the ukulele was so strong because that was his whip hand. Wasn't mm. <laughs> he a pigeon fancier as well, wasn't he? I, I don't know about the pigeon stuff, though. Might have been. No, maybe not. I thought he was a big pigeon fancier. Yeah, he was definitely a jockey when he was a kid. Mm. Uh, there you go. Well, I'm going for George Formby. Get in. Real, yeah. Get in it. Go, <laughs> you good thing. I'm going to jump on the bandwagon. It wins. Sure, oh, everybody's going for George Formby. Crikey, there won't be a lamppost left to lean on at Ascot by the end of the day. <laughs> um. Every window will be clean. <laughs> I'm going to go for Rosie Mary for Craig Allen because that's run some really good races so far this season and I think it probably is uh, has got a bit of a chance the ground's a bit of a concern but it's not quite so firm on day two as it is on day one so I'm going for Rosie Mary one for the Phillies three year olds Martin what do you reckon Tunisia all the way Nick yeah I'm uh, Tunisia as well I know Paul loves Portugal but Tunisia's got the form in the book. Um, they had a win the other day. I'll go with it too. Oh, blimey. Um, well, I'm going to pick that because I like to be devil's advocate, so I'll go for Portugal. Nice. Mm, all right, OK. So we move on then to the three-year-old sprint Commonwealth Cup. Six furlongs and a lot of new horses in this. A lot of new ones in this. This is an open race. OK, yep. Yeah. But I've got a sneaky feeling that um, our new fourth musketeer, the form man, thinks he's going to win this. I will lose the plot if this thing gets beat. <laughs> I will genuinely lose the plot if this thing gets beat. I'll be, uh, the newcomers, I'm, I'm worried, seriously worried about these newcomers. You've got one for Darren, Leon, two for Vinny, Craig's got one, Dave's got one, there's a few others, Daniel French, Paul, but I, mean, I think mine's clear on the form, even though Carrasco Eric's beating it. Ascot is where I trial, is where I do all my trialling. Evocavado did not get beat once as a two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old by any of them. Swift Rumble, you name it. Avocavadro beat them all. If he loses, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you Doug and Stuart's story now. Last, I think it was last week. I sent Nick a message and I said, if there's ever any races you don't want to commentate on or anything, just let me know and I won't give them you. And his, his, his reply was, no, I'm not bothered. I'll do any ones. I don't mind. Yesterday, I got a text. I don't want to commentate on race number 23. <laughs> so I think he thinks he's going to win it. <laughs> I think he thinks he's going to win it. So that's got to be a tip in itself, I reckon. About swapping commentaries, what happened last week with, oh, I love the Mackerson, let's make sure I come on the Mackerson. <laughs> Let me do the Mackerson, so we give you the Mackerson, and then what do you say? Well, for a start off, it was the Hennessy, but apart from that, the, okay. the true okay. story about that is, as you know, we well, were... Ashamed legged horse one off 76 or whatever no no it wasn't that what, what, it, what it was was because it was the transfer window this week and i knew i'd got a lot to do because some of us are still busy working and i knew i'd got a lot of horses to get rid of so i thought i'm gonna have to break my own rules here and i'm gonna have to watch the races as soon as i can so i'll know which ones to get rid of i did me 
commentaries because I like doing. I don't like to do the commentary when I've seen it before because I think people can tell when you've already watched it. To be honest, I was that surprised that it won. It was a rubbish sort of commentary, and I thought, well, do you know what? I'm going to get Stu to do it again because it was awful. Well, I didn't do it any better. <laughs> <laughs> So that was that was that was why you ended up with that one. What brace we on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we started talking about the jump race. We're on race twenty-three, which is the Commonwealth Cup. Which is um, you're oh, commentating on it, so hopefully you, you're commentating on this because hopefully you'll um, right. you'll know okay. which race it is on the day. Yeah. Um, John Morgan got a horse in it. No. Stu, no, Stu, let Stu tell me because you've been wrong every time. Mate. Okay, right, okay, I'll be quiet. No, there's no John Morgan horse. How about Hollywood? No Hollywood horse either. You're in trouble now. Yeah, I am. No, I'll, I'll go with Nick's horse. Have a Cavadro. Well, I'm going to have to go with Eggnog as well because he's, he's really bullish about it. And if he doesn't win, then uh, we're all... Uh, I don't know. So, yeah, no, we'll go for... No, I'm going to change my mind to Bad Man. <laughs> change your mind to what? Bad Man Rising. Oh, right. It is, yeah. I'm just surprised that you like it because it's a bit sort of like good. You don't normally like good stuff. Yeah, but I'm this because I can sing it. I won't, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, so that's gonna be that's gonna be an interesting. I think we're all going for all going all going for Nick's. I think, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. For that one, and then we'll all meet him up in the champagne bar afterwards. I've just had an idea, you know, Nick. The way that Doug's doing this um, tipping today, maybe you could pitch it as an idea to the racing post you could have a column where they sort of they just shout out the names of the trainers and he picks one like that <laughs> <laughs> so a bit like that yeah. um you ever see that carry on film where sid james the budgie tips the winners he reads the names out and the budgie starts singing and um, yeah that's a bit of what we do that we do we do that with Doug, i think we'll read the runners out and he can whistle when he knows the one he wants to win Gray. We should get Gray on here and his birds. Well, I did invite Gray, but I don't think he read the message because I, I sent him the thing and said, you want to come on? Because he, he said to me a few weeks ago uh, about, about doing these. He said, that, hey, that sounded like you had great fun when you were doing them. And I said, well, you could come in and join in if you wanted to. And he said, well, nobody ever invited me. And I said, I just thought you knew you could come if you wanted. So I invited him this time and he never answered. So. Hey, Mark, oh, sorry. Mark, when you sent him the message, did you use commas and full stops? <laughs> See, so that's where you've gone wrong, Mark. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll remember that next time. Don't they have an education system in Wales? Well, you see, this is the thing. He's not even technically in Wales, really. He's still in England. He's just over the border. He's not even actually proper Welsh. No, that's even more than Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I just want to apologise to all our Welsh listeners. <laughs> I think you have to do that for that. Remember that time when I interviewed John Morgan and everybody thought he was Chinese or Japanese and nobody could understand a word he said? Do you not remember? It's, it's still there on YouTube somewhere. You just said, I didn't understand a single word that he said the entire time. Because he's got a very, very, very Welsh accent. Anyway, we're going to get back to sensibility now. What's next, Rice? Wolferton Handicap, 0 to 180. No, not 180, 0 to, 0 to 80. More than two <laughs> Was this a staple chase? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, I'll jump in. Um, yeah, no idea. <laughs> Fire Maniac looks too good for this level, probably. Uh, Django's got one down there. Um, watch out for mine. Coniferous grounds come good. We'll love our Scott. Uh, he, although he decides to come from the out to the car park, so if he doesn't decide to reroute to the car park this time, he, he might actually win. Hallam Volt has probably got a good chance, and so has Grin Holiday, but Pyromaniac's probably the one. Do you want to box him up, Nick? <laughs> he has to be boxed up as long as it's not in the uh, in the back end of the car park. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll go for Django's horse. I think Django's horse might set the world on fire. Yeah, he hasn't had a winner for a while, has he? Has he had a winner? Yeah. yeah. I think we've, we've, we've all tipped him earlier to win another race as well, so he's not doing as well as he did last time, but uh, he's he's mm. still getting there. There's actually some good-looking good looking horses in this race, some good form. I like the look of that Mitwell Beck, and I like the look of Grin Holiday as well. I think it'll be between those two. I'll be just going to fall down on the side of Grin Holiday. Now I'm going for Hannon Volta for Vinnie Gerrard. Uh, been unlucky in its 
couple of rough, you know, it's about his grade, 0 to 100, 0 to 80, I think, is probably a good one in here. I think uh, Vinny Jarrow will take the wolf to a handicap. At this point, we're supposed to be going to the ladies only Prosecco bar to meet up with Lady Sharon of Bootler and her friends again but unfortunately they're not going to be there this afternoon as there was a little bit of an incident yesterday you may recall that one of her friends was called Rebecca and they selected Lucky Rebecca to win the fourth race now Lucky Rebecca did win the fourth race I know that because I trained Lucky Rebecca um, and they got a little bit excited Rebecca especially and she burst into the unsaddling enclosure and tried to embrace the jockey she was approached by a policeman who tried to tell her she wasn't allowed in there there was a bit of a scuffle and the police Man's helmet got knocked off and they got arrested so they're up before Ascot Magistrates Court this afternoon so they can't actually come to the races today however Lady Sharon of Bootle sent her selections for today's races via a photo link this morning so we'll put them up now so you can see her selections and hopefully we'll be back tomorrow to do the fashion thing that was supposed to be going on today and day three selections as long as they don't get locked up and now over to Stu, who's having a last minute walk of the course, last minute check up on the going, and we'll go straight from there into today's races. So good luck everybody today, and we'll see you all later on. Thanks for that. Well, I'm down here on the course, and I've come out quite early, and a few horses doing a bit of early morning walk here as in, in the hunt, as it is Gold Cup Day, and in the hunt for the full road stables, going out for a, a morning canter, looking rather fresh, as well as I can see Tunisia there. And that's one that goes in the Coronation Straits looking for a four-timer on its previous three. So, but as I get onto the course here, I'm just on the straight. And as we saw yesterday, there was plenty of horses running down the centre of the course that took the win. Where the ground, there was still a little bit of more cut in the ground as so we moved over to the browse. It was fairly firm. Another horse just passed me there is Avo Covadro. Driver's main hope in the Commonwealth Cup later today. He thinks highly of this. So good luck in that event. But the ground today, we've had the rain, and it is going to be good. Stuart here have watered the home straight as well. There's plenty of it. There's a bit of cloud cover today. Not so much wind. So I think we'll have a good day to race in. And uh, on true run ground. So back to the studio.